video is going to be Show Me the Data Part 3. We're going to talk again about approximating expectations. There's such little to say about it because it's just a fact of mathematics that works out uh, kind of compactly and neatly once you have appropriate notation going on. Um, and then we'll look at examples in R. All of the approximation and examples in R are going to surround the expectation known as the variance. Okay, so I got approximation, approximating expectations, specifically the variance. So in the world of statistics, there is a data side. That is where most of the world of statistics lives. They have a bunch of observations from some distribution. And those data are thought to have come from oops, a distribution side of the world. This is where random variables are defined. And we imagine they follow some distribution let's call it capital F, with density function little f. Now these distributions have all sorts of fun shapes to help statisticians appropriately understand processes with random data. So it's like you get these, you have these processes going on around the world uh, around you, and those processes can be observed to provide you some data. Now, what you want to know is things like, where is the expectation known as the mean? Where is that? Like, how fast are events happening in this world? And we also want to know things like, on average, how wide are these distributions? So there is some calculation, which we call the variance, that tells us, on average, how far is a random variable x from its mean in terms of square difference, uh, distance? And the crazy thing about this world is with data from the process of interest, you can estimate the variance just by going the mean. And then you take all your data, x, and you subtract off the mean of x, and you square the difference, and you take the mean of that. Now, what we need to remember here is that we're actually working with vectors in this case. So x is a vector of length n. You can subtract each element of x. You can subtract from each element of x the mean of x, which is just a scalar. You can square all those differences, and then you can take the mean of this new vector that you get from it. The benefit of the random variable notation, which we just recently introduced, is that this expectation looks surprisingly like this expectation. So we can make, literally, this is our code, everything except for the tildes, to make our x's look like vectors. This is actual R code you can use. And in the world of mathematics, this data side operation is actually approximating this distribution side calculation, which we call a variance. That gives us some measure of average, in terms of squared distance, the data R from the mean. Average squared distance, the data R from the mean of the data. So we're just going to jump into R and look at a few examples like this. The only thing we should really note at this point is this calculation is so common in the world of statistics, they have a calculation, a function in R named variance of x, and it's just equal to all of this for you. So we'll just use the function in R named var, lowercase v-a-r, and you just supply the vector of data you have, and it does this whole calculation for you. So we will start with, let's let x follow the binomial distribution, k equal, now I'm just going to make up numbers, but you all should explore on your own and make up numbers that help you understand what's going on. And in this case, the variance is equal to k times p times 1 minus p. 
So if we just generate a bunch of, let's say 301, because why not, a bunch of data from a binomial distribution with k equal to 17 and the probability of success equal to 0.25, then we're going to get a bunch of integers that look like random numbers from 0 to 17, but the values from basically 10 and up aren't likely to happen because the probability of observing a 1 is so low. So if we just, oops, I generated the data again. That's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Now, if we calculate the variance of x, this is approximating k times p times 1 minus p. So that's a little hard to see. So we'll just do the calculation ourselves. And indeed, 3.35, let's call it, is pretty good, pretty close to 3.2. So I encourage you to increase the sample size. Once you choose values of k and p that you like or whatever, increase the sample size and see how this calculation is approximating the distribution side expectation. Let's just do one more example where I can show you some cool things that exist on the interwebs. Uniform A equals negative 5 to B equals positive 5, because why not? Yep. We can generate data, R units. And 301 observations from min equals A to max equals B. Now here, this is the continuous uniform distribution. So indeed, we get a bunch of data from negative 1, nope, negative 5, to positive 5. And it's the uniform distribution. So all of these values have equal likelihood of showing up. Now var of x is estimating something there is a distribution side approximation. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, so watch this. I'm just going to go to Google, and I'm going to type in continuous uniform distribution. And Wikipedia is an excellent source of information for a bunch of different uniform, no, a bunch of different distributions, uh, continuous or discrete. Just type them in by name, as I've given you the names. You can find all sorts of information on them. And they all show up under this random variable notation. And it's just a density function constant from A to B. And it's a line because it's a continuous distribution. And the variance is down here over as, oh, look at that. This is why I don't have it memorized. B minus A squared over 12. Eh, who knows? Do the integral yourself. You'll probably find that. So we've got B minus A squared over 12. And in fact, if we just copy that, type it in, indeed we see that 8.3, the distribution side variance, is pretty close to what our data side calculation is getting us. So that turns out to be totally cool. So I'll leave you with a challenge problem. Suppose x follows the gamma distribution with shape equal to alpha and rate equal to beta. You choose alpha and beta. And my hint to you is you can generate gamma observations with this syntax. You should generate the observations, calculate the variance on them, and then figure out, just by Googling, what distribution side expectation, known as the variance, is being approximated by code like this in R. I hope this video went OK for you. This is actual calculations statisticians do in the world. They are often interested in means and variances of distributions, because those turn out to be incredibly informative when you're studying specific problems in the world around us.